Hello friends, John Perry here. I have just published an animation on the Stated Clearly channel, my main YouTube channel, called Darwin's Monster. It's about Saphos equalis, the species, which is a reptile that gives live birth, but it gives a very crude form of live birth. It is a transitional form between egg laying and full-fledged live birth. And I know <laughs> that What's going to happen when I look at the comments underneath that video, there's going to be a bunch of people who want more examples of species that are transitioning here, or else they're not going to believe it. Because Saphos aqualis, it's a, it gives a very crude form of live birth. It just holds its eggs in really, really long. Those eggs have a thin shell. And the, and the egg duct, the egg canal of the mother, has a lot of blood vessels in it. And those blood vessels help the egg exchange gases and so on. But we don't think that the mother is feeding the egg, the egg like you would do with a placenta, right? It just, it, it looks like the egg shell has reduced so gases can exchange between the mother and the baby. So oxygen can come from the mother and CO2 can be spit out by the baby. But there's not full nutrient being given here. There's an egg yolk, and actually you can see there's a photograph of uh, one of the clear eggs. So this this one species, individuals that live in warm climates, they have uh, normal eggs, fairly normal eggs. Individuals that live in cold climates, they retain their eggs inside their body so they don't freeze, and then they uh, they give live birth, quote, live birth. It's very sketchy, live birth. They lay these egg sacs that sometimes rip open when they're being laid, or sometimes they, they'll stay in there for a bit after, after being laid. Again, very clunky form of live birth. And I know that people are going to complain that that doesn't count as live birth, because it's, it's being laid in a sack. So this doesn't count as a transition, it's just something else that God made, or whatever. You know the argument, this is, it's just, it happens constantly, it's, this is the internet. Some people are very, very uh, butthurt by the theory of evolution, so they 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 want to they want to reject it at all costs. Well, this paper published in 19, uh, 1935 by Dr. Claire Weeks, it goes over a whole bunch of different forms of live birth that she discovered in her studies of reptile reproduction. In Australia, there's a lot of reptiles that give live birth, and some of them give really advanced live birth. They have full-fledged placentas. And actually, she never found one of the full-fledged placentas. Like, there are reptiles that have placentas that look strikingly similar to mammal placentas. She found what she labeled type 1 placentas, which are what we have in Saphos aqualis. She didn't study Saphos aqualis, but that's, that's what it has, according to her description. That's where you just have a really thin shell and lots of blood vessels in the egg canal. A type 2 placenta is where you have a very thin shell and you have, you have 3D vessels in the egg canal, so the, the vessels are sticking out a bit. She suspects, though she didn't have proof back then, and I don't know that anyone has proof now, but the, the type 2 placentas there, they certainly do a lot more for, uh, you know, the exchange of CO2 and oxygen between mother and child. They certainly help that egg breathe, right? But there's not good evidence, at least not in her paper, that there's actual nutrients from the mother to the child, that the child is being fed through those blood vessels. But then she found a type 3 placenta, which is the earliest form where we do have confirmation that there is nutrients being passed from mother to child. And in these ones, and I've got a picture of one, I don't have the picture from her paper, but her paper actually has pictures in it, but I don't have access to the full thing with pictures. I only have access to the text because, as you know, scientific journals suck. Okay, here from a different paper, which was free, I found on the internet for free, a History of Reptile Placentology. And this one has... A really cool picture of the type 3 placenta that her and several others before had found. Here it is. So here on the right side is what you could call the egg sac, but it's it's such a reduced egg. There's no, you can't even really call it an egg shell. It's like membranes, an egg membrane. And you see at the bottom it's all withered like that. 
there's an interface, there's a bunch of blood vessels on it, on the baby's side, and there's a bunch of blood vessels on the mother's side that are 3D, and they they form they, they interlock basically. They don't actually like the mother's blood doesn't go into the baby. And by the way, that that doesn't happen in humans either. Uh, we have we just have a, a really close withered interface between the baby and the mother. And this is what is happening here. It's a, it's, a, it's a simple form compared to what we have in humans and most mammals, but it's the same thing. <laughs> it's it's like a true placenta. And we know that there's actual food being exchanged between mother and child because the yolk in these eggs is very, very small. Now, humans, early on, at the very early stage of implantation, we do have, well, we, we, do, we use a yolk sac. I don't know that we're getting much like fat and stuff from that yolk. It's a pretty reduced yolk sac that humans have. The yolk sac in these reptiles is bigger. There's there's actual you know, like yellow yolk with rich fats and proteins and stuff in there, but it's dramatically reduced. And just to backtrack a little bit here, when a chicken lays an egg, all of the stuff that's going to become a chicken has to be in that egg already. So the yolk and the egg white, the egg white's like sugar and protein and water, and then the yolk is like fat and protein. There's more stuff in there. And then uh, the, the eggshell itself, the, the, the minerals in the eggshell get pulled into the egg as it's growing, and those become minerals in the bones of the chicken. But everything has to be there in the egg. If you're going to lay an egg, it's all got to be there because the mother can't feed the egg once it's you know, like she, she, she makes the egg, so she's providing all the food into it as it's being produced, but once it's laid, she can no longer add anything to it, right? So it's all got to be there. In these reptiles with the type 3 placenta, these reptiles are actually getting nutrients from the mother. So there's a reduced egg yolk. This is very advanced uh, placenta. It's not the most advanced placenta. We now know of more advanced placentas that exist in reptiles, but this is the most advanced that uh, Claire found and that she reported on in her paper. So I just I just wanted to point out that this paper exists. I said in my video I was going to do a deep dive, but <laughs> I've got a flight that i got to get, get to. So I my deep dive is not going as deep as I wanted, but there are some parts that I wanted to read in here. And I want to talk about Claire a little bit. Claire is a very interesting woman. She's uh, She was the first... She, I'm pretty sure she was like the first woman to get a, a degree in biology... Uh, from her university in Australia. It was kind of a boys club back then. She spent 10 years studying the evolutionary biology of reptile reproduction. 10 years. So she started in 1925, 100 years ago. She published a bunch of papers on reptile placentas and reptile eggs and so on. Various degrees of placentas. But here she goes over a bunch of species, like about a dozen species of skink and reptile, other other lizard, and then a bunch of snakes as well. There's a bunch of snakes that have independently evolved placentas of varying degrees or live birth in varying degrees. So from egg retention to full-on placenta. She went all over Southeast Australia and she just collected lizards she collected lizards and snakes, and she figured out how it is that they reproduce. She brought them back to her lab, did dissections, all sorts of things, learning all about their reproduction, did uh, captive breeding, you name it. She was, she was doing it. From that work, she was able to put together these three types of placenta, from simple type to advanced type. And we now know of a more advanced type still from this. Not only was she able to figure out these these different degrees of placenta that exist, so she found this really nice like transitional pathway from egg laying to full-on live birth like mammals do, but she also found the reason for it. And she wasn't completely sure of the reason, but she was fairly certain because what she found is that all of the species that laid eggs, they lived in warm humid climates. And all of the species that gave live birth, they either lived in high elevation cold climates or 
insanely dry climates. As you probably know, uh, cold climates are also dry. And the problem when you lay an egg in a cold climate or in a really dry climate is that it can dry out before the, the animal is able to hatch. And so she gave two reasons for two selection pressures that were driving the evolution of, of live birth. And those were dryness and coldness. And she says that the, the most advanced forms of placenta were always found in species that lived in very cold and very dry environments. So high elevation animals. She did find a couple of species that didn't fit the bill. So species that were, uh, they were live birth and they were living in warm, humid environments. And what she found is that, well, their ancestors were live birthers. So what she thinks happens is that you start out laying eggs, the environment triggers you to evolve live birth. You know, if you happen to have the mutations, that starts to evolve. And there, there comes a point kind of a, of no return where once you've given up on eggshell production, you can't really, it, it's very difficult to evolve it again. Eggshells, pretty complicated. So it, you end up just sticking with the placenta and with live birth. You just, you just don't revert. So it's very interesting, this paper. A uh, hundred years ago, <laughs> Basically, just her and one other guy, one other professor, her professor, were just doing this work together until the guy died. <laughs> he, he was old. He died. And uh, she continued on without him, and she published this beautiful paper, and I recommend that everybody reads it because it's awesome. It's just plain English, beautifully done. Uh, Claire went on to be a therapist. She helped hundreds of people with their anxiety, her her therapy that she developed on anxiety, I think, I'm pretty sure it's still used today. I mean, we use a lot of drugs now. Uh, she was not, um, I don't know if she was against that, but uh, she was doing just normal, like talking people through their fears. And she came up with some really interesting theories on anxiety disorders. But yeah, that is the work of Dr. Claire Weeks. I have to go catch an airplane so I'm sorry, my editing on this isn't going to be super tight either. <laughs> my ums and buts and stutters are going to be left in. But I hope that you enjoyed that moderate deep dive into Dr. Claire's work. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll do another deeper, deeper dive when I get back from my trip. But what she's saying is that it's very hard to just look at mammals and understand the origin and evolution of their placenta because their placentas are so complex and so many weird things have happened to them since they first evolved that the, the, their history is it's fairly well hidden. These reptiles, because they're in all sorts of various stages of evolution of placentas and they're going all, down all sorts of different pathways in the evolution of placentas, they can shed light on this mystery and give us a nice model. And that's what she gives us here. She gives us this three step from Basically, no placenta, very simple placenta, to pretty dang complex placenta, one that it can actually feed the baby inside of its egg, inside of the egg canal. So, very cool work. Really nice paper. <laughs>